coming up on World's Greenest Homes. In the UK, a member of Parliament gives an old warehouse a new lease on life. It's just me, 3,000 pigeons and all the pigeon poo I could shovel. And in Japan, a Texan architect blends Western ideas with Eastern tradition. I always thought if I had the chance to design a modern version of an old Japanese house. Then off to the Netherlands, where a suburban family have made transparency a way of life. Join us as we visit the world's greenest and most extraordinary homes on the planet. I'm in the fair city of Nottingham, a big university town made famous by the outlaw Robin Hood. Once home to a booming lace industry, and now thanks to an MP on a mission, it's on the cutting edge of a green revolution. There are hundreds of unsound Victorian warehouses desperately crying out for green makeovers. We're heading to a 2,000 square foot building that's been abandoned for decades. It's now been converted into a three bedroom, three bathroom, super eco-friendly family home. On the main floor, the kitchen is constructed from locally reclaimed materials and is perfectly situated to allow for lively interaction between the dining and living room. The bright sunny bedroom with a wide central bath and an eco-friendly bathroom are the focal point of the second floor. Up on the third floor there are two inviting warm bedrooms enjoying ambient lighting from the large sun-filled skylight. We know a sustainable home can be built from the ground up, but can a derelict building become an eco-friendly oasis? I'll find out when I visit this former lace maker's hall that takes recycling to a whole new level. Alan Simpson is a member of parliament for Nottingham South in Britain. As an environmental activist, he wanted to show the public that it is possible to transform decaying structures into sustainable family homes. His first project was to find an old dilapidated warehouse and convert it into an inviting green home for himself, his wife, and his daughter. A friend rang and said, look no further, I found it. It had been derelict for 50 years. There was just me, 3,000 pigeons, and all the pigeon poo I could shovel. What an adventure to get here. This is quite the challenge, just to find you. It's a magic treasure trove, this. It's, it is hidden away. Come just round the corner and let me put it in context and show you where it all started from. The outside walls are insulated with rock wool. Rock wool is produced from rocks and minerals, heated to incredibly high temperatures, and then spun into a mass of very fine intertwined fibers. It provides thermal insulation and is helpful in acting as a sound barrier. Why not drop the place? I mean, I know what renovation is all about and the cost and the time and the stress and whatnot. Surely that would have been the easiest thing to do, but you didn't do it. Every time we, we drop a place to the ground, all of the embedded energy that went into the original building just has to be expended again. We've just got to stop wasting the, the energy gifts from our forebears and our past. My mission is really about trying to transform the whole way we think about the built environment and the houses that we live in. I've always lived in old houses as a child and that's been my obsession. Welcome to our home. The entrance provides a bird's eye view to the main living area. Is that the original staircase or did we make radical changes here? In truth, the original staircase had abandoned us long before <laughs> we arrived because it had just crumbled. It was utterly unusable. I ended up buying the place without ever having been able to see the floors above and what state they were in. That seems a little radical and crazy to buy a house that you couldn't even see. It was a decision of the heart. I walked into this place and I thought, what potential. Alan found all the reclaimed materials locally. The bright red marmolean floor is natural linoleum made from jute, wood flour and linseed oil. It's biodegradable and repels dust mites. I'm quite obsessive about having a kitchen that I feel comfortable cooking in. So a lot of thought went into the how of, of this space working. What about other recycled uh, products in this space here? Much of the kitchen is constructed from salvaged materials and recycled. The surfaces have all been you know, reclaimed woods that have been cut into blocks and then bonded together. 85% of everything in this eco-conscious home is reclaimed or recycled, and these giant cardboard tubes are no exception. Not only are these recycled recycled fiberboard rolls cool to look at. They're excellent for both sound and heat insulation. There was a school somewhere in the south of England that had built walls from recycled uh, fabric material rolls. It does symbolize what you can do from the use of recycled materials. It's just about imagination more than anything else. And the imagination just keeps rolling along. 
the floor in the colorful living area is striking and original. These are basically the panels that you would see boarding up broken shop windows. And they're all made from recycled shredded timber that are just pressed into boards. So we thought, actually, you could make a really nice floor out of that. It has a sort of marbling effect. How did you get the pigeons out here? The pigeons were an event in themselves. We dealt with them ecologically. We hired a man with a hawk, and they came in here, and the hawk looked up at the pigeons and just flapped its <laughs> wings. And, and it could see 3,000 versions of lunch. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there was this enormous fluttering of wings, and out they went. From that day onwards, the pigeons never came back in here. In the UK, we have 25 million existing properties. And if we're going to reduce our carbon emissions, the big question is, what do we do with the existing housing stock? Does it get better the higher we climb? Well, I'd like to think that every floor has its own little surprises. Oh, I love the exposed brick. Which is, for me, a real earthy quality in the house itself. I can't go past the brickwork without that wanting touch. to, yeah, to touch it. From 18th century bricks to recycled glass, this building is filled with some very pleasant eco-surprises. So this was a gift, partly, from the builders. The builders? Well, we knew we had to put a double-glazed window here and wanted to make it the sort of thing that many of us had as, as children, which was a kaleidoscope. So the builders kept wine bottles that had been finished at the end of a working week, and we had the wine bottles sliced and bonded to the front piece of glass. You get this fantastic cascading of light. On the way to the master bedroom is an interesting little bit of wastewater promotion. If you've got it, you may as well flaunt it. The house reuses and recycles all of its grey and brown water and cuts consumption by 40%. It, it's certainly a conversational piece, and sometimes it's a conversation stopper. <laughs> yeah. Down the hall, the master bedroom basks in glorious natural light. It provided some very interesting challenges. We couldn't work out where and how to get a bath and a shower in the bathroom without leaving ourselves a very tight sense of space in the bedroom. In the end, we decided, well, why don't we just have the bath in the bedroom? The bathroom is equipped with a water-saving dual-flush toilet. Generally in the UK, shower pressure is created by electricity. But in this case, a German-designed shower head cleverly combines air power and water flow to maximize pressure while minimizing usage. It just sucks the air through and gives you the force of a power shower, but without consuming electricity to deliver it. On the third floor, a sandblasted glass walkway allows natural light to flood down from the skylight to the hallways below. I think it's safe to say this is probably one of the coolest features in this space. For many people, it really does require an act of courage to step onto the landing. Well, that's why I let you go first, because <laughs> I knew I was safe. And to get a good look at the home's final eco gem, we cautiously make our way among the neighborhood rooftops like old time chimney sweeps. You do get to see just how extensive we have been able to make the solar paneling. It just sucks in whatever sunlight there is available. Along with their efficient heating and the solar panels, Alan is able to export 50% of his electricity back to the national grid. I suppose I'm a fairly unconventional member of parliament. I went in because I wanted to change the world to give our children a life worth living. As Nottingham stands on the edge of the future, one man with vision and courage is showing the wisdom of reclaiming the past. When one thinks of Japan, what comes to mind are breathtaking ancient temples set amid bustling futuristic urban backdrops. A four-hour drive from Tokyo is Nagoya, Japan's fourth largest city and industrial powerhouse. Like the rest of Japan, this dynamic metropolis manages to harmonize the modern and traditional ways of life beautifully. This is a unique 1,000 square foot, two bedroom, open concept house in the neighborhood of Kakuzan. Here, ancient Japanese customs coincide with Western eco-architecture to create a multicultural family home. The house is perched over a gently reflecting shallow pool of water. Upstairs on the main floor, the windows and doors slide away allowing for cooling cross ventilation. On the lower level are two bedrooms and a light-filled master bath. Former Texan architect Michael Wienick has made a career out of designing houses in Japan. My boss wanted me to come work in Japan, and it was a three-month assignment that uh, ended up lasting uh, 18 years so far. In 2005, Michael designed and constructed an eco-friendly house for his wife Keiko and their son Ray. It's not the biggest house in the world, but the way we made it and stuff kind of makes it feel like it's a pretty big house. 
This piece of land came with some major building and design challenges, namely the steep 30-foot drop. My wife looked at it and said, you know, a Japanese person will never buy this. It's too difficult to build on. As an architect, I looked at it and thought, this is nirvana. You know, I could do something with this. With a pretty limited construction budget, we tried to be creative with how we developed the site, because the house is acting not only as our house, but as a retaining wall to hold back seven meters worth of the hillside. The unique design is supported by two 17-foot tall steel trusses that are as high as the entire top floor and run inside the north-south walls. This gives the house a feeling of floating in midair. When you walk into a Japanese house, you take a step up. In this case, in our house, you take a floor up. The open and spacious main floor was designed to encourage communal living. Family and friends are welcome to hang out in the living or kitchen area. What I wanted to do is just have a simple house that was going to let us keep the natural light, let us take advantage of the breeze that blows up the hill. The contemporary space is framed by eight-foot sliding glass doors. They glide open completely to allow the natural breezes to cool the house. Nagoya is a very hot, humid climate. Having the cross ventilation all the way through the house is what really makes it the kind of house that doesn't need air conditioning except for a couple weeks out of the year. These floor to ceiling windows are heavy, so they're hung from the ceiling uh, on, on rails. Um, that means there's a gap underneath that rain can blow through. The problem is in the typhoon season, we get a lot of rain underneath the window. Something I wouldn't do necessarily for a client, but certainly something that Keiko and I are happy to live with. Although the main floor is one large open space, Michael designed the sleek eco kitchen with Keiko in mind since she teaches cooking classes out of the home. It was customized with energy efficient appliances and a beautifully durable countertop. My husband designed this uh, table, big table, just for me. So this is not Japanese way. But I think this is not a Western way, just, you know, just the Michael and the Keiko's kitchen, I guess. I'd always wanted to do a concrete counter in a kitchen and never had, had the chance to do one. So this, being my own house, was my first chance of doing it. I like the concrete because it's just a, you know, it's a beautiful, simple material. There's nothing fake about it. Not only is concrete extremely durable, it's also a good recyclable material that can easily be broken down and reused again and again. Traditional Japanese homes are big, simple spaces. They're subdivided by moving shoji walls. Shoji walls are translucent wooden screens covered with rice paper. This wall folds out of the way so it can be a separate guest room when we want it to be. And in a Japanese room, somebody would roll out a futon on the floor. And in our case, we open up our Murphy bed and lower that big thing down. But it's the same thing. It transforms this otherwise living space into a sleeping space. It's a Japanese soji wall kind of on steroids. I always thought if I had the chance to design a modern version of an old Japanese house, it would be kind of fun. Downstairs on the first floor is the master bedroom and an airy bathroom that bows to tradition. The greenest aspect is the fact that it's only one bathroom. Our whole family shares this one space. So we have two sinks here, a low volume toilet. Almost all Japanese tubs are made of Hanoiki or Japanese cypress, a fragrant wood that doesn't rot and resists mold and insects. One of my favorite parts about living in Japan is uh, Japanese bathing. This is a very traditional Japanese notion that you clean yourself off first and then hop in the tub to soak and relax, not to clean off. Light and water are heavily featured in Japanese landscapes. Michael has taken both of these aspects, mixed them together, and turned them into a gorgeous green feature. The reason that I wanted to build a reflecting pool here was not just to make the entry look nice, but I really wanted to be able to reflect light into the front of the house, and especially into the bathroom. And in the summer, as the breezes flow over the water, the pool has a cooling effect on the area. Our fence and the gate are actually recycled materials. They come off of a Japanese highway, so we were able to buy this material very cheap and use it for some of the exterior parts of our house. For me, I, I love it to have designed and visited all these tiny little houses over the years. It's always a kick when I wind through the streets and end up at my house. It you know, always makes me feel really happy to be home. My home is a great home. It's a kick-ass home. It's sometimes called Venice of the North, also known as Sin City and the party capital of Europe, Amsterdam, where hundreds of miles of canals wind through the cultural center of the Netherlands. This region of Europe has up to 60% of its population living below sea level. It's here, one hour southeast of Amsterdam, where contemporary loft living meets the great outdoors. Built in 2005, this 3,000 square foot home has three of its walls made of glass, an open concept living area with three bedrooms and two bathrooms. 
Idyllically, surrounded by trees and shrubs, this glass suburban home has its own ecosystem and has a luxurious Japanese-style pool and sauna. This transparent home is designed so that the more communal areas face the street, while the more private spaces are found at the back of the house. Keish and his wife Trace knew that this transparent loft-style home was exactly what they wanted for their family of four. This whole house is open. I guess this really describes who you two are uh, as a couple and, and the way you live. And the loft idea is we want to be together as a family. It gives you an open atmosphere, but it gives you also the idea that you're living in nature area. The double pane glass walls and two skylights provide more than just a great view. They supply energy saving passive solar heating in winter. How do you keep the house at a nice comfortable temperature during those hot summer months? We just open the windows. And you get a nice breeze through and that's all you really need. The cooling breeze is courtesy of the ponds on both ends of the home. Together they can lower the temperature of the interior by two degrees. And because the house is shaded by the trees, there's little chance of the summer heat ever becoming unbearable. And if it gets chilly, they have automated radiant floor heating. And if it uh, is uh, really cold, we uh, have a fireplace. This gas fireplace is the centerpiece of their living area. Gas burns clean, creating less outdoor pollution than their wood burning counterparts. Even the choice of wood throughout the home is eco-friendly. Their floors, the outside awning, and the dining room table are all made of Dutch Eep. The Eep? The, Eep. the Dutch Eep. <laughs> the Dutch Eep, a custom piece obviously for this space. Yes. I love the idea to make what our own environment is. And we choose the Dutch Eep because it's uh, our, our national tree. More eco-friendly features can be found in their bright contemporary kitchen. Like most Europeans, their appliances are small, which means they use less energy. It's certainly by North American standards on a small scale. Is that traditional for the Netherlands? Yes, we don't have the fridge like the Americans have two doors and uh, water in it. Uh, that's uh, exceptional here. The decor everywhere sports bold jewel colors. Just off the living space, the study walls were painted a deep terracotta. We have a second home in the south of France and the buildings are mostly terracotta. But the most predominant color in this home is green. What I love about this space is I constantly feel like I'm almost outside. When you are working here, you have direct contact with also the water. It's inspirational and gives a peaceful idea. I now declare that the master bedroom is the coolest room in this house. This is an amazing space. Mm, it feels comfortable. In the morning you wake up by the sun. And wake up to the peaceful sound of that waterfall just outside the window. Following the waterfall, we come to their bright master bathroom. The fixtures were strategically placed to once again fully experience the dramatic outdoor view. Look at this, stunning. When you are staying here, you have a look outside when you are in the morning, you wash yourself, etc. This stylish T-shaped countertop is made of Corian, a blend of natural materials. It's non-porous, resistant to mold, mildew, and bacteria. For another great view, directly above the bathtub, there's a skylight. When I'm lying down in it, you, you can see the sky, and that's what I like about it. Now you've got a window, where's that going? The window is going to the sauna. So let's go see the sauna! Okay. This cozy sauna is one of the home's most luxurious features, and you're still connected to the outside. Okay, now you have a sauna, you can watch the waterfall, yeah. you can watch and the in the evening, evening, then it's uh, dark outside. Yeah. And the only you can see is the candle burning and then the waterfall because of the lights in the water. And on or under the deck is one of the home's hidden treasures. Oh, is that ever cool? Oh. This Japanese soaking tub was designed to be hidden when not needed. Okay, well this tub's not exactly warm. Well, first you go into the sauna. Okay, that makes and sense. And after the sauna, and then you can relax here in the cold water. The tub is just one more of the home's unique outdoor water features. So the ducks have names? Are these your own personal ducks? I mean, how many backyards have a pond with ducks? No, they chosen us. We didn't choose them. Every year. Again. Every year they come again. <laughs> and a green roof is just one more of the natural habitats found on the property. And what's the roofing system here? It's made of little plants, see them. So it's a green roof, low maintenance? Yeah, you, you don't have to do anything. Like all green roofs, this one provides excellent insulation. During the winter time, the, 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 the warmth, mm. and during the summertime, the coolness. With quiet confidence, Keish and Trace have taken the natural themes of water and light, indoor and outdoor, and turned a suburban property into a stylish, eco-friendly glass haven. Now, I love open concept living, but this open concept living in your bedroom where you're naked a lot of the time uh, would take for me a while to get used to. Was that something you had to get used to or no? No. No, because uh, the trees and the leaves on the trees will cover everything you have you want to be. <laughs> it covers all your privates. Yes. <laughs> yes.